then I start. Okay, I'm Tomasz Schweinger from Collabora, uh, and uh, today I present uh, about a uh, new feature uh, in Calc. Uh, it's uh, two new features, one is in Calc and one is in uh, uh, charts. So this is spark lines and the data table chart. This was uh, sponsored by uh, NGI, and uh, uh, it's good to mention them uh, that uh, for this contribution. Uh, so, first, I like to talk about the spark lines. And these spark lines, uh, like they are like mini charts that are inside the cells itself, uh, displayed inside the cells. Uh, this used to like, quickly visualize the data uh, inside the chart you're on, and they are basically drawn to the background, so you can still uh, edit the uh, edit the cells, cells and <coughs> overwrite with the content. But this is not uh, nice in most cases, so usually they should be empty. Uh, there are three types of uh, spark lines. Uh, one is this uh, line, as you can see on the L column here and the first. Uh, next is uh, the column based. These are like just columns up and down, uh, positive and negative. And then stacked. This just shows if the data is positive or it's negative. So they don't show the magnitude how, uh, uh, of the data, but just positive or negative. Uh, and these are generally the, the types that are uh, supported inside the uh, uh, OXML. Uh, so we didn't go and add new ones here, because this will be then even more problematic. Uh, so spark lines can be, spark line is generally just for one cell, yeah, but they can be uh, grouped inside sparkline groups uh, because of in many, in many cases you have in many cases you have uh, sparklines that multiple sparklines that have more or less the same properties so you can quickly just add them to the group and uh, there's how this is uh, meant is that even if you have one sparkline unit, it still has to be in a sparkline group. Uh, so what are the properties, uh, which are now sp sparkline group properties, because sparkline itself doesn't have many properties just for the input data. Uh, and what we can change here is quite a lot of things. Um, for example, the CRS color, and uh, you can choose if there should be a special marker for the negative, high, low, first data, last data, and so on. And you can choose all the colors. Uh, uh, then there is like you can choose like if it should display the hidden also, or it just it should ignore them, and if the Sparkline should be oriented left to right or right to left. And uh, you can also display the x-axis. Uh, this is if you have a positive or a lot of positive and negative uh, values, uh, this is good. But if you have just positive values, probably you don't want to uh, show the x-axis at all. Uh, then you have choices like uh, what to do when when the empty the, the cell is empty you can then choose like it choose to totally ignore like it's a gap or you should uh, treat it as like zero or it should just uh, span it through um, then you can also choose the the maximums and minimums of the uh, spark lines uh, so here you can just say it should 
more or less automatically choose what is the maximum and minimum depending on the data, or you can choose, uh, select that uh, it can choose the maximum or minimum for the whole group. So because the, the whole group has uh, different maximums and minimums, and you can just choose the best. And uh, last alternative is to just. Uh, set the custom value for the uh, minimums and maximums displayed. Uh, so, uh, about the impl implementation of it, so when I was implementing this, this was like three major tasks. Uh, first, add sparkline model uh, and how the, it's uh, stored inside the cells. Then, of course, it's very important to add the ODF support and, and then also uh, extend the ODF uh, uh, with new uh, elements and attributes uh, so they can be, of course, uh, uh, exported and imported uh, uh, into the ODF format. And same is OXML or uh, Microsoft uh, format. Uh, should support it for importing and exporting. Here is a little bit uh, uh, different because uh, there is already support, so I kind of started with this first and then added the Spartan model accordingly. Uh, a little bit how the class diagram, how the, this whole uh, works together. So. We have a class like Sparkline, and uh, which uh, is only has the data range and uh, output cell. So data range, which is what uh, what is uh, data should uh, take into account, and the output cell uh, is just where it should be displayed. And then you have Sparkline group, which can have uh, multiple Sparklines uh, uh, associated. Uh, and besides that, uh, there is not much inside Sparkline group because most of the uh, attributes are inside uh, Sparkline attribute class and uh, this is done because it's much easier inside undo, redo, to change uh, uh, the the Sparkline uh, attributes uh, class itself instead, instead of just uh, uh, having multiple Sparkline group uh, uh, which would need to copy and, uh, uh, the data around. So it's a little bit, uh, it turned out it's a little bit easier uh, to do it in this way. Um, then there is uh, this class Sparkline list, which is just more or less like uh, just uh, uh, holds uh, uh, weak pointers to the Sparkline group uh, and uh, a list of uh, Sparklines that are associated with the Sparkline group. Um, this is generally just so that uh, it can be easy, easy uh, accessed uh, inside uh, OXML and ODF filters. And and just quickly uh, iterate uh, through all the spark lines and write it into the, uh, the file. Uh, there's also sparkline cell. Uh, I didn't <laughs> write anything for this, but uh, sparkline cell is just uh, more or less uh, a, a class that uh, is uh, uh, instantiated for the uh, one cell and immediately associated with a sparkline. It should be one-to-one -one, uh, relationship all the time. So if sparkline cell is deleted, the sparkline should also be deleted. Uh, but I think maybe this is also uh, inside uh, under redo where we can just de de allocate it uh, quickly. So um, I think that under redo is uh, when you undo it, uh, you can just uh, unreference uh, the spark line, and when you redo it, you just reference it back. Uh, so, how the uh, spark lines are uh, stored inside? Uh, we have uh, for the uh, inside calc 
uh, you have uh, for all the columns you have uh, like one multi-type vector that is that always holds the values. Uh, uh, you have Also, other things like uh, comments that are inside this multi-type vector, and of course the values itself. So there is an, a new multi-type vector for, especially for the spark lines. Uh, what's special this multi-type vector is that when you have a, a one column, uh, it's uh, a sparse uh, data type, so it only uh, allocates the, the for the ranges uh, uh, the storage. So when you have new range or extend the range, you have one, you extend the big, big range. So if you go to the end, it doesn't allocate the whole, uh, the whole uh, column uh, uh, vector, but just what is used. And uh, the same is like now for the spark line. So it doesn't uh, need to uh, use uh, unneeded uh, uh, memory space. Uh, okay, I, I, add, I had to add to a lot of other Unredo actions here uh, for the creation and uh, destruction of uh, deleting of sparklines and sparklines group. Uh, in this case, uh, I used uh, uh, a principle that of reversible actions so that generally un, un, a redo will add, will create the action and undo it, undo it. So you have like positive and negative uh, actions and uh, there is no other code uh, besides uh, like do one specific actions, but you have just first you do, first if you uh, execute an action, you redo it or do it and then you can undo it. Uh, So maybe I'll just show a little bit what you can uh, quickly what can you do with the uh, add sparklines inside color. Uh, you can just select some data range, add a new sparkline, and you just select where it should be displayed. Um, yeah. How to get to the OK? I think you can hold control to move the move when you get to the OSCO. Or was it all part of the OSCO? OK, managed to do it. So, uh, because uh, it also has like this fill action, uh, so we can also do this for the spark lines and it will be created for uh, each uh, row. Same, you can also do it the columns. Uh, so, what is select when I uh, put uh, the cursor on the Sparkline, what is selected here is to show what is inside the Sparkline group, so you have easier way uh, to see. So, for example, in this case, this is missing here, so this is not part of the Sparkline groups, but it is here, and it's this empty... Let me see if a little bit of display, yes. So here is another Sparkline that was accidentally added. Uh, but you can see it with the sparkling group. You can also then, inside context menu, you have a lot of actions here. So you can delete a sparkline, which means you just delete this sparkline one here, and we leave a gap. 
or you can just delete the whole Sparkline group uh, and send it with the edit. You can edit the Sparkline group and uh, Sparkline itself. Or you can also, for example, uh, you can ungroup it. So now we have two different Sparkline groups and if you change change the Sparkline here, and now I have again this, oh no, it's nice. Ah yes, uh, I have to group it again, and now this is one Sparkline group, and this is another Sparkline group. And if you think that this shouldn't be like this, you can group it again, and now it's the same as at the beginning. So that's it. Okay, the next uh, next topic is uh, the char data table. Uh, this is a little bit shorter. Uh, what char data tables are? Um, yes. Uh, okay, what char data tables are is below uh, this. Uh, the chart, uh, these are the data table below the chart area uh, or the visualization area and in some cases uh, it can uh, replace also the x-axis on and there are some cases uh, which still leaves the x-axis uh, present like uh, in the bottom one here there is this x-axis x -axis, uh, these labels are still present, but the chart data table is uh, drawn below it. So, chart data table is just the uh, list the, in, inside the table uh, all the data that is visualized by the chart. As I said, like this is position below the x-axis of charts, and as I said, that can be uh, can also replace the labels and this is also specified by the OXML, so most of the things are same properties that are inside, defined inside the XSSML. And uh, there's not a, much, uh, a lot of uh, properties, mainly there are uh, four properties that are unique to the data table, so this either is show horizontal or vertical border, um, this is the, the horizontal vertical border is uh, if you see on the top line of the top uh, there are horizontal vertical border enabled but on this left one uh, only the uh, vertical borders are enabled uh, and horizontal borders uh, are disabled. Uh, there's also uh, either show outline and show keys, if I go back, so show, show outline is outline around the table, which is uh, on the bottom. This one has the outline enabled, but other other ones, they don't have uh, any outlines. And the last is show keys, which keys is um, maybe uh, not a good uh, description. May, generally these are label, uh, le legend uh, symbols, which is called keys uh, inside uh, Microsoft Office, so I left this. And uh, as you can see in the board, this right side uh, uh, data tables have the keys and the left one doesn't. Um, there's another uh, properties which are just uh, already existing properties uh, from for the line and feel properties and there's also uh, text properties so you can change the fonts uh, line properties you can change uh, uh, how the lines will be uh, shown like if uh, what uh, the thickness and if they should be uh, dashed or dotted and feel is uh, how the uh, feel of the uh, 
text actually should be displayed. So about the implementation, uh, this is uh, uh, inside uh, chart, so I added a new data table uh, class uh, which is just responsible for the model, so it holds only the properties uh, uh, of the data table. Uh, and also, of course, the text field line properties uh, is the same. But the, the most important here is that the data table view, uh, which is just responsible to, for, our, for uh, rendering all the, uh, uh, the, the data table shape. Uh, the data table shape just reuses the table shape uh, that is already present, in, uh, for example, inside uh, the draw. Or, uh, it's just the same shape, and uh, all we, what is all needed is just map the properties uh, from from the data, data table class inside to to the data table. Uh, uh, this table shape property, which is. Tricky a little bit. So. Uh, a little bit about undo redo in charts, which is a little bit differently handled uh, as uh, in calc. In charts, uh, every time we do uh, any uh, change, uh, it creates a whole uh, um, copy of the model. So, what the only thing I have to do here is that uh, I have to uh, allow the data table class uh, to be cloned. So cloning must be supported uh, and uh, then everything else was already working out of the box more or less. Uh, which is nice, you can quickly change it and uh, uh, don't worry about it, but yeah, in, in the long run it could be a little bit memory expensive. Expensive, but I think it's fine. Uh, I'm not sure if I have prepared something. Yeah, this is uh, currently uh, uh, gray. Gray boxes are uh, fixed, uh, but I have an uh, old file here that is still has them. Uh, but generally, uh, what we, what we can do here is. Can delete the data chart. Okay, first we have to add it uh, in normally as we, we add it just insert data table and we can choose the properties and it will create some default data table uh, inside the chart. And as I said, we can delete it. This is most. <laughs> Uh, what can you still do is add the properties. So here you can choose the change the properties, for example, for the line. Oh my. Okay. Maybe I can just show it. I can change the keys. Now it works. 
Oh, you didn't change. Okay. Okay, any questions? So uh, I just have one question related to data tables. Uh, have you seen my uh, regression bug reports and do you plan to fix them? Uh, sorry? Uh, have you seen my uh, regression bug reports about data tables and do you have time to fix them? Uh, yes, I will, I will look at them. I saw, saw them that they are uh, uh, accumulating and, and at some point, I will go and fix all of them. Uh, um, okay, thanks. Too much. Thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I just saw it with the sparklines. Um, when the cell gets higher than right, would it be an interesting option to lay out it vertically? Uh, Maybe automatically? That the automatically. It happens? It yeah. is done? Yeah. Cool. Sure. Okay, any more questions? Not then, thanks.